Of all the rooms in your house, the kitchen by far is the most important room. Even if it needs a paint job or some sort of update, it is the hub of activity, the heart of the home, where everyone should feel comfortable and at ease. And that's the way I hope you'll feel today as I welcome you to Carol's Kitchen. Our guest musician today is Hope Ostrander, a senior communication arts major at MBU with a minor in music. She's from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and she's no stranger to Carol's Kitchen. A few years ago, she and her two sisters played the violin for one of our programs, but today she'll be playing the piano. In fact, the two songs that she's going to play were recently part of her senior piano recital. The first song, is Be Not Afraid by Craig Courtney, arranged by Gina Sprunger. The lyrics are based on Isaiah 43, and they say, Be not afraid, for I have redeemed you. Be not afraid, I have called you by name. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the floods, they will not sweep o'er you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be consumed. You are mine, you are precious in my sight.
The first thing that we're going to put together today is good old fashioned cornbread. It can be hard, it can be easy, but I prefer easy, so that's what I've done. I've picked an easy recipe that tastes way good. I've used those box mixes and uh, they're fine. And I'm glad that they exist, but I think this is a step up. We preheated the oven. It's preheating right now to 400 degrees. We're going to prepare the pan that we're gonna bake it in with. I've got butter spray. And now we're gonna to put together our dry ingredients. First is one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of cornmeal, two-thirds of a cup of regular sugar, one and a half teaspoons of uh, baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and mix those all together, all the dry ingredients, so that they're well mixed. Pretty easy. In a separate bowl, we're gonna mix, mix the wet ingredients. A cup of milk. A quarter cup of a neutral oil which is, this is a vegetable oil. And one egg, one large egg. Mix those together. Crucial to get the egg yolk broken first. Mixing those together. We're instructed to take this dry ingredient mixture and create a little well in the, in the center, just a, a little hole. And that's where we're gonna pour the wet ingredients. And then start mixing it. Mixing it by hand, don't over mix. Uh, you want to be sure that everything is wet, everything's combined, and it's okay if you have a few lumps. You wanna be sure that you have most of the lumps gone because it'll all uh, bake out very quickly. I told you folks, this is easy. We take our prepared baking dish, pour it into here. I'm seeing that I need to mix it just a little bit more. There we go. The last spreads out nicely. And there you see it. It's ready to go. Did I tell you? It was really, really easy. We bake it in a 400 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes until it's golden brown on the top and then it's good to be eaten. Our story today is entitled, Are You Talking to Me? One sunshiny Thursday afternoon, I was driving home from work on South Carolina Highway 291. I was listening to unique FM, my favorite Christian radio station, when I heard the voice of God. It was not audible, mind you, but the message was loud and clear. It said, call Unique FM and see if they have any job openings. I almost laughed out loud. What a silly notion, I thought to myself. I'm an academic, a music and drama teacher. I don't know the first thing about radio broadcasting. They wouldn't be interested in hiring me. And besides, there's a Christian university just a few blocks from the station that graduates students with degrees in broadcasting who would give anything to work there. 
I dismissed the idea of calling the station and went about my business. But God would not leave me alone. He kept impressing me with the urgency to call Unique FM 94.5 immediately. I was not easily persuaded. You see, nearly a year late earlier, I had begun a sabbatical from teaching due to some critical health issues. While recovering, I worked as a music reference librarian at a local public library. Now, with my health issues under control, I had put my application to teach several places for the upcoming school year. And in doing so, I was facing a new dilemma. All three of the college was where I applied offered me a contract. Yikes! My current prayer was, Lord, please help me discern which position is your will for me and not, Lord, please give me a job I know nothing about. The next Friday, I finally caved to the incessant urgings of that still small voice and I called the radio station. I wasn't sure what to say since this wasn't my idea in the first place, so I asked rather apologetically, uh, you wouldn't have any job openings at the station, would you? Well, not that I know of, said the receptionist, but Dayton Walker, our manager, it's out of town today. I suggest that you call back on Monday and talk to him. He would know for sure one way or the other. Okay, I will, I sighed. Even if I didn't want to call back, I knew the voice would keep pestering me to follow through. When I called on Monday and spoke to the station manager, he told me, on Friday, when you called, we didn't have an opening, but today we do. Over the weekend, our receptionist got engaged to be married, and she gave us notice this morning. Why don't you stop by and fill out an application? I hesitated. I thought, I didn't go to college and grad school to be a receptionist, but the voice was nudging me to take the next step, so I squeaked out, oh, all right, I'll, I'll come by tomorrow. The next day, while I was filling out the paperwork at the station, Mr. Walker poked his head around the corner and said, when you finish that, come to my office and we'll chat for a few minutes. During my brief interview with the man, he explained, I personally can't make any hiring decisions because I just took a new position in Arizona, but my replacement, Jim Dixon, will be on site next week. So he set up an interview for me with Mr. Dixon the following Tuesday. Wow, everything felt so indefinite. Lord, are you sure this is your plan for me? I prayed. If it is, please make it so obvious that there will be no doubting your guidance. My interview with the new station manager, Mr. Dixon, was very detailed. He wanted to know all about my education and my experience in communication. I couldn't see how all that mattered for a job as a receptionist, but I answered his questions thoroughly. At the conclusion of the interview, he said, well, all that's left is for you to meet with our financial manager, Roy Barton. So he called the CFO who said to send me right over. As Mr. Barton laid out the terms, salary, and benefits of the position in great detail, I thought, this is the most comprehensive job interview I have ever experienced. When he was done, he said, now if this is agreeable to you, just sign here and we'll consider you hired. Hired? I asked incredulously. Well, yes, uh, unless you have some questions. I just smiled and signed the paper. I had asked the Lord to make his will undeniably clear to me, and he had done just that. I was now the receptionist at Unique FM radio station. So how did I like being a receptionist? It was fine, I guess. I, I can hardly remember because I was the receptionist for such a short time. Before long, I was traffic manager for the station in charge of all on-air scheduling. And then I became the copywriter, writing all the commercials, directing the voicing, adding sound effects and background music. 
Eventually, I had a weekly show, Great Women of Faith, that I wrote and voiced. Once I became adept at using the equipment in the recording studio, the station engineer taught me how to do live radio so I could anchor the 6 o'clock news Monday through Friday and take my turn running the station one Sunday afternoon a month. I worked at Unique FM for nearly four glorious years until the Lord very definitely led me back to Watertown to teach at Maranatha. In retrospect, I sure am glad I listened to that still, small voice that spoke to me in my car that sunshiny Thursday afternoon as I was driving home from work on South Carolina Highway 291. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. In Thee, O Lord, I put my trust. In Thee, O Lord, I put my trust. In Thee, O Lord, I put my trust. The End Prolific composer and arranger Rebecca Bonham has written many works for the piano, flute, brass, and choral groups. She currently teaches at Berean Baptist Music Academy in the Atlanta area. Her publications are available through Lorenz Corporation. Today, Hope Ostrander will be playing Rebecca Bonham's arrangement of the traditional spiritual Go Down Moses, which memorializes the exodus of the children of Israel from Egypt. And the song starts out like this. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land, tell old Pharaoh to let my people go.
For our main course today, I will be preparing brothy conchigliette with chickpeas. An Italian touch comes together pretty easily. We start out with three tablespoons of olive oil and mix that around in our hot pan. So we've put three tablespoons of olive oil in our pan and now this is one small onion chopped. Ah, the sound of frying onions and the smell of frying onions is lovely. I know when I'm cooking at home and I've got something with onions in, even if I'm running a little behind, my husband will come home and say, ooh, something smells good. And uh, he knows that supper can't be that far behind, even if I'm running late. To the onions, we will add uh, three garlic cloves, small. Actually, that's what the recipe calls for, but to make it easier, I used uh, just the jar of garlic. So I used uh, a half a teaspoon for each gar uh, clove of garlic, so it was a teaspoon and a half of garlic from the prepared garlic in the, the canned garlic. So now we have got our one small onion and the equivalent of three cloves of garlic. Uh, and I chose to use uh, garlic from the jar, from jar. To that, we will add a teaspoon and a half of rosemary. You could use fresh, but in the interest of uh, ease, uh, this is just dried rosemary, which is readily available at grocery stores everywhere. Oh, and you start smelling the sweet aroma of rosemary. To add a little zippity doo da, here is one quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper and a little red pepper goes a long way. Oh, and I can smell that, wow. I have a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. You could do it with fresh tomatoes, uh, but this is certainly simpler. To the tomato mixture now, we will add uh, 32 ounces of chicken broth. The original recipe that I found called for making it with uh, water and not broth. And to my palate, uh, making it with water didn't have quite the flavor that I was hoping for and that the chicken broth uh, would offer. Using water, of course, would make it a completely vegan dish because there's no meat and just chickpeas. To our tomato mixture, we will add our chickpeas. Now this is like a 15 ounce can of chickpeas that have been drained and rinsed. And while that is cooking, we'll bring it back to a boil and here's that fancy word I use, con conchigliette. That is uh, an Italian uh, pasta. And I thought, I'm never going to find this in a store in Watertown. It's at Aldi's for 99 cents. Hello. Pretty cool. And <clears throat> basically what they are are slightly larger uh, shell pasta. And I'm going to put a, this is a 16 ounce uh, package of it, and this is half of it. This is eight ounces, which I will add to this mixture. And then we'll bring this to a boil and cook it for maybe six to eight, well, depending upon, it could be as much as 10 minutes. Uh, depending upon what it takes to get the 
uh, the pasta to be al dente, and that's all there's to it. And it'll be a wonderful, tasty treat. Well, our brothy conchigliete with chickpeas is done and ready to go. The last thing is to top it with some our generous portion of Parmesan cheese. Our cornbread is warm and ready to go. I want to thank our pianist, Hope Ostrander, for sharing us with us uh, beautiful music. And now we get to partake of these tasty elements and attest to their being worthwhile making. But before we do, we're going to sing the blessing, shall we? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Let's dig in. If you'd like a copy of today's recipes, just call 920-262-4021 or email watertowntv at cityofwatertown.org. This program will be available on demand at watertowntv.com or on our YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed the program today. Please join us next time for Carol's Kitchen.